Hello everyone, in this video we will see 10 amazing new features of Flow Designers in ServiceNow. I'm really excited about these features because few of them we really needed while we were developing our Flow Designers. So stick around and watch all these 10 new features and they would really really help you while you are developing these Flow Designers. Welcome to my YouTube channel, my name is Hardit Singh and if you are liking my content please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button. So this is the agenda of this video. We will be discussing all these 10 new amazing features of ServiceNow. And if you want to jump to any specific topic, I have provided the links in the description. The first feature is the Workflow Studio where ServiceNow has now consolidated all of these features of ServiceNow for automation under one roof. So playbooks, flow designer, action designer, integration hub and decision builder are now available on one screen. I'll just quickly show you in my service now instance. You just have to go to all and type here workflow studio and you would see under process automation the workflow studio. However, if you still want to search for flow designer, it's still available as of now. I will click on flow designer or either you could have clicked on workflow studio it will open the same screen if you notice the url it says workflow studio so the link takes you at the same place either you click on flow designer or workflow studio and you can see all of these under one screen processes flows subflows actions decision table so whatever you have created or whatever is available out of the box it's all here in the second feature service now has introduced new trigger conditions which unfortunately we will not be able to see on our PDIs because performance analytics is not enabled on PDIs. In this feature, ServiceNow has included new conditions to trigger the flow designer based on the analytics KPI scores and KPI threshold values. So when these values hit, when you have built your performance analytics reports or KPIs, you will be able to trigger flow designer maybe you want to raise an incident maybe you want to trigger a new email to the senior managers and so on next is what all the developers are loving around the world is undo and redo this was really really needed because people were adding or removing steps by mistake or maybe intentionally and they just wanted to add them again and that feature wasn't there then you have to do it from the scratch so now undo and redo have been introduced in flow designers finally and it's an amazing functionality let's go into service now and quickly see that i will go into one of the existing flows which i have created called hardit content 2 so i have created this for demo here and you would see there are few steps already here let me try deleting this step number one called send email for this i will have to click on edit flow which we will come to later i will delete this step and now you would see there are two new buttons available at the top called undo last action and redo as well. I will click on undo last action and you would see the step has came back and then I can again redo the last action as well. So that step is now gone. So this is an amazing functionality provided by ServiceNow and I'm sure it will save a lot of time of all people who are developing the flows. Next is try catch similar to your Java and .NET development if you have done or even in any other programming language you would know there is a try catch functionality available. So if you have put your code in the try and if it doesn't run properly or it fails it will jump into the catch section and it will run those steps which are in the catch section. So this is kind of error handling which was provided by ServiceNow Flow Designer already. However, this I feel is more efficient. We need error handling definitely. But this try catch is surely very very helpful when you are adding your steps or action in your flow designer and then you are not sure if they will run properly or not which I have seen in many cases. I will give you an example here. Let's go to service now. To add a new try catch block, you have to click on this plus sign and then add a new flow logic. Scroll down at the bottom and you would see try here. Just go ahead and add try and you would see you can add the steps which you want to include in the try block 
and then if any error occurs on step 2 so that is in the try block then service now will run these steps which are in the then part of this try catch statement so this step number 3 is the catch block of try catch statement i will just remove this as of now because i have already added one try and catch here so what i am trying to do here is i am trying to send an email in the try block and if i click on this i have done a weird thing here in the to field i am actually not using any email field i am just using an actual start which is type of date and time so i am not using the correct field as of now and it will definitely throw an error in ideal case if we would have done that in the error handling this step would have failed and whatever generic error handling we would have put at the bottom that would have ran and if you want to learn more about error handling in service now how can you create generic error handling for all of your flows click on the top right corner or you can watch that video later it's really really helpful however in this case we will add a catch statement here you know for example if this send email fails we will update the incident so this flow is built on a trigger condition when an incident is created and now what we will do we will just update this incident that the email you had given was incorrect in the catch block so i will click on action i will search for update record i will click on update record and now i will choose the same incident record which was just created and in the fields i will update the description to maybe there was an error in the email provided in try block i will click on done and i will activate this flow and as soon as it will be activated i will go ahead and create an incident which we can do parallelly i will go in all i will type incident dot filter i will click on new and if we look at our flow it has been saved so i am good to create a new incident i will select hardit here and maybe washington test one so this is the short description of my incident i will save this and the description should be updated that you have provided an incorrect email within few seconds i will refresh my screen and after refreshing you would see there was an error in the email provided in the try block so our try block is running successfully your flow will not go into the error handling because you have put a try catch block so this is a real advantage for the developers when they have to put additional logic in the code when they know this is an error prone code next feature is exit and skip in loops so we have two types of loops in service now the first one is for each loop and the second one is do the following until and now if you want to skip that loop at any particular condition you can go ahead and exit that loop immediately so this is nothing new for a developer who has worked on java.net or javascript this was already there but service now has introduced that now in the loops as well so at any particular point of time and at any condition if you want to exit that loop just go ahead and use this exit functionality similarly in the skip if you want to skip the current iteration of the flow logic when you have a condition which is met so you have to put a condition in the if loop that at this particular time or at this particular condition this iteration should not run so you just put an if there and it will skip that iteration and move on to the next iteration and if you want to learn more about loops in service now that link is on the top right corner and in the description as well and i will make a separate video on exit and skip functionality of these loops because if i do it in this video this video will become very long next is fdih dashboard which is introduced in the washington release it's really helpful for the service now admins because if they would want to see all the flows based on their usage execution or any debug information they can go and see at one screen also you would be able to see the status of the integration hub transactions as well and this access is right now only given to the admins you can give it to other people as well but i would rather give it to only admins which is out of the box let's quickly go and see this dashboard how does it looks out of the box i will click on all 
I will search for FDIH dashboard, which is available under flow administration. So you can navigate from there as well. So once this dashboard loads, you would see there are multiple options given here. The flow usage in last 24 hours, in last 14 days, the flow executions which are in complete state, which are in cancelled presumed state. So everything is given here. I'm using out of the box instance, which is a very fresh instance. So nothing much is available here. However, you would be able to see that in your client instances or the instance which you are using actively. Similarly, this is IH usage means integration hub usage. If you are using this plugin or you are using any integration using the integration hub, everything would be available here. In the flow executions, you would be able to see flow executions which have been executed in your ServiceNow instance. For example, you could see one of them is Hardit Content 2, which is the flow designer which I created. So the execution of that is available here. Next, it is the mid server execution. So all the ECC messages count and everything is available here. Also, you would be able to see you can click on system properties and it will open in a new screen and you would be able to see all the system properties which contain the name as flow and there are additional features given here which you can go and explore on your own and next one is now assist recommendation i would say this is my second favorite i'm just waiting for my washington patch 2 because this is available in that and in this feature you can build a multi-step flow using generative ai what that means is you can build multi-step flow outline from a flow description in flow designer so in the flow description when you are defining a new flow if you give some content that i want to build this what service now will do is using its generative ai capabilities it will generate a flow for you automatically and which will be kind of a structure it will not have any configurations however you can do own configurations in that you just have to type what you really need I will quickly show you where to do that when it comes up. We will go to our workflow studio, click on new and click on flow. And here you see the description while you are defining your flow for the first time. And whatever you give in this flow, it will be logically read by generative AI and it will create number of steps on its own based on its understanding. And then you can go ahead and configure those steps. So it's my second best feature, which I like. So I'm just waiting on the Washington patch release too. And as soon as it comes, I will go ahead and make a video for you. And finally, this is my favorite feature called content definitions and content filtering. In this functionality, you can restrict people from looking at the content of your flows. So this was really needed. So you can display only content that is relevant to particular user hiding content and that is unnecessary or sensitive. And we can specify the flow designer content that we want to control and that role user must have. There are two features in this. The first one is content definition where you have to specify a type of flow designer resource. So you can maybe define the flow designer itself and you want to hide it from all other admins and you just want that flow designer to be available to your team only. You can define that in the content definition. So content filtering rules specify the role that a user must have to access that particular content. So here you in the first step in the definition, you have to define what content you want to hide. And in the second step in the filtering rules, you have to define what user roles should be able to access those and other people will be denied even they are admin. So we will also see a demo of this content definitions and content filtering in a separate video because this is an amazing feature and it will take time to explain this feature. It's an amazing feature. You should go ahead and use that. It's available since starting of the Washington release. So if your instance is in Washington, just go ahead and start exploring that. Meanwhile, I am making the video. I hope these 10 new features of ServiceNow Flow Designer were helpful to you and you loved these features. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click on that like button. And if you have any questions or any feedback, please let me know in the comments sections. Thanks for watching the video.